Hi everyone, sorry it's taken a while to get another one of these community roundup videos out. I've been organizing, helping to pack up the house for moving and sorting out a faulty laptop, talking to the voices in my head and all of that usual stuff. But anyway, it's finally time to have a look at some of the cool stuff happening in the community. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, I wanted to take another look at Emiliano Colantoni's channel. The reason why I want to recommend this channel, even though I'm pretty sure I've recommended them before, is because in a recent video of ours we did called The Other Ways to Model in Blender, there was a section in that video about metaphors and voxel modeling, basically methods of blending meshes together using these primitive shapes. I don't think anyone is as good at demonstrating this technique as Emiliano, and that's why I'm recommending their channel, because the most recent videos are pretty much all using this method. There's a sci-fi gun, a sci-fi crate, and more interestingly to me, a concept bike. And if you click on these videos and have a look through, they're not tutorials, but they are like process demonstrations. So basically showing you how they construct this shape. So if we go to the part one video, you can see here how they're using the metaphor features to actually put the shape together. And this is actually quite an intricate process and requires like a kind of unique set of skills, which is I guess is more akin to sculpting. This part one is about 44 minutes, 28 seconds long. And in the part two video, they'll actually take this further by incorporating the sculpting tools into this process as well. So basically for adding like extra geometric details along the surface. If you're having a lot of trouble with poly modeling, this may be a technique to check out. And I think it would be worth giving these videos a watch because they're pretty cool like technique demonstrations showing what is actually possible. So yeah, really cool stuff. There's also some other interesting videos on their channel as well, including Mechify here for getting like procedural mech-like shapes. You will likely find this interesting if you've been playing with the different biogen stuff as well. I really like their work. It might also be worth checking out their other socials as well. Now moving on, we're gonna take a look at a relatively small channel called CG Python. This channel was run by Victor Stepanov and it's basically exactly what it says in the title, Learn Python by Making Art. It's quite a wide variety of actually quite nicely made videos showing you how you can create artwork in Blender using Python. I know there is a bit of a demand for this type of content and one of the things that most of us tutorial makers do is like we'll do one or two Python videos and then just like leave it for ages, which I know is a bit disappointing to the people that just want to learn that. Although Python videos are a bit like kind of harder to market if that makes sense. But I think it's lovely that we actually have some dedicated Blender Python art content here. They only have 618 subscribers, which I think is a crime. So if you are even vaguely interested in Python for Blender, please, please, please go and check it out because there is actually a lot to dive into here. So I've just clicked on one of these here, Python plus Blender metaphor animation created with a script. That seems like a really cool activity where you can come with like a really nice kind of motion graphics result. And as you can see as well, like the quality of the videos is quite nice as well. So yeah, it might be worth checking out. Just thought this was a channel I've bumped into that definitely deserves some attention. Next up, we have Clever Poly, another kind of relatively small channel. They've been doing a lot of nice geometry nodes based tutorials. And from these, you can get some pretty cool results. So I want to recommend the popping corn geometry nodes tutorial because that's quite an interesting effect. We can take a look here at the beginning, watch how the corn pops. Very nice. They'll show you how to do that in geometry nodes. This is about a half an hour long tutorial. And another one, one of the most recent ones, mind blowing simulations with geometry nodes and cloth physics. I think this will be useful for MoGraph kind of artists because I know they love all this kind of stuff. But also, more more than that, there's some really interesting ideas coming out of this channel. So for example, this procedural dinosaur animation in Blender. This is something I haven't seen many people doing. This is the actual tutorial here, the 40 minute long one. But they essentially show you how you can actually animate a character using geometry nodes kind of procedurally. So you don't have to do it all by hand, which I think is quite interesting. So you might find this particularly useful if you want to try and learn more about how those two workflows can overlap together, animation and geometry nodes. And yet elsewhere on the channel, there seems to be some product visualization type content. There's another kind of interesting knitting effect here. The the best knitting tutorial on YouTube. A very bold name, but the effect looks quite good. Again, kind of more motion graphics type stuff. So yeah, that's Clever Poly. It's always nice bumping into these new creative people, kind of like pushing the limits of these new features. All right, so next up we have Smeef. Now Smeef is a really interesting channel. If you take a look down from the pantheon of demonic dog heads, then you'll find a variety of like highly edited and really entertaining videos. The way I would describe this format of content on these videos is retention cult editing. Basically, you know, everything's like very shortly cut, lots of memes and GIFs and fun stuff thrown everywhere to make it like as entertaining as possible. The kind of thing that's more optimized for like the wider YouTube audience. That kind of style of content might not be for everyone, but I know there are a lot of people that really enjoy it. I do quite like that style as well, but I like having, you know, like a variety of different types of things. Sometimes I'm feeling more like just sitting down and going through some long form educational content. And sometimes I want some like short dopamine hits, you know, a bit like visual candy, but I definitely think it's worth checking out, especially if you want to, you know, add some entertaining education to your Blender homepage recommendations. But if you want one or two videos to kind of like introduce you to the 
the channel, I would recommend the Revealing Blender Secret Lighting Setup and the I Made 100 Plus UV Maps to Learn This One Lesson video. This one in particular, I feel like really kind of condenses that editing style into like, just like a five and a half minute long, pure distilled version of this style of content. But you know, inside of these videos are a collection of actually really useful tips that might help you across different Blender workflows. There are some notes in their second most recent video at the time of recording this for kind of optimizing Blender. And I know that these kinds of tips will always be in demand. So yeah, it's quite an interesting channel. You might like to check it out. Or maybe I've just been brainwashed to recommend it by whatever this thing is. It's giving me like Futurama Hypnotoad vibes. By the way, Smeef, don't think I didn't see you sneak into my Discord server. I see you there. Anyway, moving on. A user by the name of X64 has made a Spider-Man fan film in Blender. We're using Blender and iClone called Spider-Man Vigilance. You might find this interesting. I'm not going to spoil it. I actually quite enjoyed it. Stylistically, it's quite good, like better than you would expect for like an amateur Blender animated short. It might be a bit rough around the edges in terms of animation, but I've said in other community project videos as well that I really want to see more people making animated shorts with Blender and putting them on YouTube. The thing is, again, Again, as I've said before, like for the amount of effort that goes into them, they don't really kind of pay off in terms of the amount of viewership you can get from them. It's very difficult to market your short films, especially if you don't have a pre-existing following. So that's why I'm just trying to go out of my way a little bit just to recommend some of these as they pop up. So if you like Spider-Man and you want to see what kind of indie fan shorts are being made using Blender, then feel free to check it out. Next up, we're coming into some product territory. So a few of the things I'm going to show you are going to be paid. First of all, one of my friends, CG Matter, has created a new product based in geometry nodes that's supposed to help you build up sci-fi looking interfaces. It's called the SHIT, the Sci-Fi Hologram, the Sci-Fi Hologram Interface Templates. Ever wanted to make complex holograms, but it's just too much work? Well, this SHIT has you covered. From large scale UI details like graphical animations to minuscule blinking lights, there is a completely procedural template for everything. So on the store page, you see a variety of GIFs that show you the kinds of stuff you can make. I actually think this is like surprisingly good quality. Don't be offended by that top, it looks better than I thought it would. So yeah, very cool. So what you get is you get the procedural generators. These are basically the geometry nodes templates. And then you also get the rendered out elements as well. So you can use them in like other software or, you know, just any way you like. I'll leave my affiliate link down below as well if you want to pick it up while also supporting me. But of course, you don't have to use that. So yeah, very interesting. Now, if CG Matter wants to plug this in the future, he can just tell people, go buy my shit. Okay, so a member of my community called Donna, who has also contributed to the community material pack in the past, has released a series of useful tools on Gumroad. So this includes an AI generated alpha brush pack, which is actually like surprisingly more useful than you would think. Like there's a good variety of brushes here in particular that might be more useful for like organic and creature type stuff, but they actually look really nice. So there's a demo version where you can get a collection of five brushes to test and use. And then there's a full version as well, where you get like all of the 60 brushes. There are also 2K and 4K versions of these brushes as well. So if you think that's interesting, then maybe give it a try. I was interested in kind of seeing like how long it would take people to start creating packs from AI generated content. Of course, this is all curated, like these have had to be prepared after they've been generated. But yeah, I think it's pretty interesting, but that's not the only thing they've made. So they also have a procedural mold generator, which is only one euro. This was actually featured on the 80 level website. And it's basically a procedural shader setup that lets you generate mold around an object in response to the proximity of another object, as you can see here in the image. So if you want to learn more about degradation effects, or maybe to build up your own kind of proximity based procedural shader effects, then this might be an interesting one to check out. Again, it's only one euro. Just to note, if you're watching this, Donna, make sure to put a plus after the price as well so people can leave a donation. I probably could have just sent you a message saying that, but I know I'll forget. Maybe I'll remember while I'm editing this. Uh, maybe I'll leave it in, I don't know. Well, maybe it's educational. Okay, if you're putting stuff on Gumroad, hi everyone. If you leave a plus after the price, if you're selling something, it means people can enter a custom price so they can leave a higher value if they like, like if they want to leave a donation along with the regular price. Anyway, the last thing they have here is Donna's 3D scanned assets. So these are actually some surprisingly high quality scans. It's a variety of like tabletop items, vegetables, fruits, etc. You can see here like avocado, pits, bread, carrot, cookie, croissant, lemon, macaroon, mortar and pestle, mushroom, pomegranate, potato, pumpkin, rolling pin, walnut, wood block and wood pole. So these are quite simple objects and the pack is 15 euros because, you know, it takes quite a bit of effort to put these scans together. I actually like collecting 3D scans because I like using them to test my different shader effects. This is why like Sketchfab is also a really interesting resource because you can download free models from there and filter them by license as well. So I think 3D scanned assets are actually really useful if you're doing like experimental visuals and stuff. I tend to use like statues for testing my metallic objects 
effects and like dirt build up effects but I might start using fruits and vegetables to kind of test out degradation effects both in terms of shaders and in geometry nodes so yeah maybe you'll find some of that useful. Okay another thing I want to point out is that CG Boost have a new challenge going on called the Little Traveler Challenge. Recently I actually took part in judging one of their challenges and that's available on a live stream on their YouTube page. You can basically see that every time they do one of these challenges they sit down in a live stream and basically provide some critique for the winners and like the honorable mentions and more recently they've been kind of getting guest judges on board so they've done me they've done Grunt Abbott as well and who are they going to get for this one let me see ah oh, Jan van den Hemel. okay so Blender Secrets you probably know this channel again that's another like really amazing recommendation Blender Secrets is a fantastic channel for giving you like so many Blender tips they also have an amazing ebook available on Gumroad as well which basically compiles all of these tips together so they will be guest judging in this next challenge you can win prizes of course but also this challenge is split down into two arenas you have the training arena and the pro arena and the pro arena isn't just for pros I want to emphasize that it's basically where you're going to be competing against each other for like a first second and third place and the training arena is just a casual have fun try and learn something and prizes will be given on a lottery based system so basically as you can see here also you get the chance to be highlighted on the winner page and win a prize in the challenge raffle so there are different prizes for each of these arenas the training arena tends to have more educational based products which will be raffled and the pro arena tends to have some more kind of like monetary and higher value prizes so we can have a look down here training arena lots of educational stuff courses tips etc and the pro arena lots and lots of render credits asset bundles professional subscription to polygon quixel mega scan subscription etc so if you're interested in challenges that might be worth checking out also the blender conference 27th to 29th of october this year has now sold out so there are no more tickets going so i'm sorry to say if you were on the fence about maybe getting a ticket it's now too late but if you already have travel or accommodation arrangements get in touch with conference at blender.org and they will try to help you out now like i've said in a previous video i will be going to the conference i have my tickets and accommodation set up a bunch of my other creative friends are coming as well everything seems to be looking good so far but if anything changes and i can't make it then i will put like a notice out on my socials or the youtube community feed but i think it's going to be cool and i'm looking forward to it also recently over on my channel as well i put out a video basically letting people know how they can help contribute to some of my add-on projects not just the add-on projects but also the community resource projects like the community material pack so you can also check that out if you like but i think that will do it for this video i shouldn't let it roll on for too long we'll see whether i can make the time shorter before doing another one of these so yeah if you made it this far put an apple emoji in the comments so i can see who you are and also consider joining my patreon where you can become a permanent addition to this hall of patrons artwork while also supporting the rest of my projects and our community projects so yeah have a fantastic day everyone enjoy the content and i will see you next time